I don't think I will ever be able to convey just how difficult a job this is. We've, um, we're starting now to uh, set up a cage to catch a leopard. And I have a ranger with me, Ranger Sabanda. The cage is in the back. I don't know if you can see it through there. It weighs a ton and I put the cage in by myself, but I, not only do I have to legally have a ranger with me, but it's really important. I need some help when I'm doing this. And he's up ahead now clearing a bit of the road because there is no road. We're creating our own road to where we hope this leopard will come. Yes, yeah, so it's a, quite an exciting um, adventure. Each one of these uh, leopard capture attempts, um, not only physically demanding, but it's uh, also very demanding on the vehicles and um, in, in many respects because this is where I trash tires and I, I bugger up the car because I'm going through an area now where there's an awful lot of stumps and thorns Some of the worst culprits are these Dicrostachys plants, Dicrostachys cineraria. It's a, a plant um, that has not so much thorns but short branchlets that become thorns. This is one here, let me show you. If you can see here, these, these branchlets, these thorns, they're, they're actually very, very sharp spines. Elephants love it, and so they will chew, um, they will rip off branches and chew the bark to get all the um, nutrient out of the bark, but then they will leave the, the sort of paths and open areas strewn with these Dictrostachys um, plants, and if you were go to go over that with your tyre, it's like driving a nail into your tyre. So yeah, I've, I've had many problems with tyres. Anyway, we're, we have a leopard. Um, that's been feeding on a bait. Um, I put out a few baits and we had what we call a hit, um, where a leopard came and fed on one of the baits. Um, and uh, it looks like, just from the tracks, it looks like a female leopard. Um, and it even looked like there was tracks of a youngster. Maybe she has a cub with her. But um, now that she's feeding on the bait, I can actually bring the cage and we'll put the cage underneath and try and get uh, trying to see if we're lucky if she's going to come to the cage but in the meantime let me just help Ranger Sabanda because this is a really difficult thing. Setting up a leopard capture cage is not an easy task. This took us more than two and a half hours to complete. Not only is it a very heavy piece of equipment as you can see the two of us are struggling to maneuver that cage but it's also quite difficult to camouflage the cage satisfactorily especially in situations like we're working in here where the ground is very sandy and uh, there's not much cover in which to hide the cage. It's very exposed. We are now in the early days of November and uh, in the Kalahari sand areas of Wangi National Park uh, it's not easy to find a suitable place to put a cage so we had to make the best of what we could. The cage is set up on the ground underneath an overhanging branch of a tree and uh, we do this because if we capture something that we're not intending to capture, for example a hyena or possibly a lion, um, we don't have to dart and immobilize it to release it from the cage. Uh, I have a long rope tied to the door of the cage, um, there's a pulley set up in the top of the tree and we can just from a distance drive up, pull the cage door open and then release the animal that we don't want to catch. Once the mechanical aspects of the cage have been set up and tested to make sure they work properly, it's time to focus on camouflaging the cage. That begins with putting soil back onto the floor of the cage to cover up the exposed metal weld mesh floor. And as you can see, it's important to get the sand into all the little nooks and crannies of the floor of the cage to make sure that there's no metallic or hollow feeling on the foot of the leopard as it walks in. Once that's done, it's time to focus on the aesthetics and that means doing a little bit of internal landscaping to try to make the internal part of the cage look and feel as natural as the surrounding environment. In addition to the mechanical and the aesthetic aspects of the cage, we also have to take care to leave as little human scent as possible. 
That's why you can see I'm wearing gloves to make sure I don't leave any sweat from my hands on the cage or on the grass or on the sand and I don't kneel down when I'm in the cage. I stand on my feet and crouch into the cage. And now we try to put up uh, a little bit of vegetation to soften the hard edges of that cage. There is a temptation to put a little bit too much vegetation which makes it look nat unnatural at the end of the day. And it also creates almost like a passage or a, a dark corridor for the leopard to go in. So there is a, a subtle mix between softening the edges of the cage and overdoing it a little bit with too much vegetation. So in this case we've put the floor of the cage back and now we're testing the door a couple of times to make sure it works. And that's it. After two and a half hours the cage is finally set and this is what the final product looks like. There's only one thing still remaining and that's to return very cautiously at last light when things cool down with this, the disgusting bucket of blood. Because until leopards become vegetarian and can be lured to a cage with a bunch of carrots, we have to use a strong scent trail to attract them and to cover our own human scent. After all that hard work, there she is. The target leopard has been attracted to our cage. In she goes cautiously and the door closes. She's been caught.